Hi, today we're looking at the eights of the 12 passages that we're using to reparent our inner child and more effectively teach the next generation. This verse is one that you may be very familiar with. It says as follows, you should teach it to your children and speak about it, meaning the Torah, when you sitting down in your homes, when you're walking on the street, when you're out about in the public domain, when you go to sleep and when you wake up. And what we see over here is a mandate that education is a full-time process. It has to be happening everywhere and at all times, whether it's inside your home or outside on the street, whether it's nighttime or daytime, we have their space and time that all has to be covered for an effective educational program. It's not enough to say, well, I'm sending the kids to school, they'll get educated there. The real education comes from the people who are closest to the children, the people who they get to observe the most. So this is a general notion of how we have to go about educating our children. And it's something that unfortunately many of us have delegated to the schools, just forget about it. We need to take ownership of it. I think that it, to a large measure, being a stay-at-home mom is something that is dismissed. Maybe today there's more of a, an appreciation than there has been in the past couple of decades of how powerful that role is. For decades, we've had growing numbers of latchkey kids, children who come home to a home where neither the mother nor the father is present. Or kids who are coming home and mom is home or dad's home, but either they're on the computer or they're on the cell phone. I remember when I was a kid, there was a special table chair kind of antique thing that uh, my mom owned and to speak on the phone you had to sit in that chair and that was what you did, it was an activity, you spoke on the phone. And then we had cordless phones and now we have cell phones. It's so easy to be at home and not really be there for the people that we're trying to educate. And if we're speaking about ourselves, the same thing goes. I'm here in my body all the time, but most of the time I'm living in tomorrow land or yesterday land. I'm in the past or in the future, very seldom present to just what's going on right now in this moment. So our, our education has to be across the board and we need to begin to appreciate that powerful role of educating our kids. They come home, either no one's there or maybe they're coming home and we are there but we're not really available to them. If we think about it, true change is grassroots change. Obviously we need some kind of impact top down but the real lasting change is something that happens bottom up and that is affected most by what's happening inside the home. So a child could get reinforcement and support at school and actually that might save a child, give them some, some sense of self-esteem, but if they're not being educated in a way where it's not just information that we're giving over, but trying to give over, you have a purpose, I love God. I love the Torah and being connected to it. I'm communicating between the lines to my children all the time. So it's not just about giving over information. I'm giving over that white fire. And if I give it over in a way that is holy, then if a child receives something negative at school, they'll be able to counteract it. Very often, a teacher, good friends at school could save a kid, but they're still going to be suffering when they're learning certain negative messages in the home. You know, I, I know a woman who is one of a very large family, and uh, they live in, in the Holy Land in Israel, and a journalist once wanted to interview the family. It was an article that I saw written up in a, ma in a magazine, actually from a secular Israeli newspaper, quite fascinating. He came to this family 
to interview them and lived with them for a couple of days. He wanted to see what's it like in the home where a mother is educating many kids at the same time. He said he thought it would be disastrous, but it was actually wonderful. This one did the salad and this one put the, the fish out, etc. They set the table in a jiffy, they cleared up really quickly. There was a newborn baby, the baby was in a rocking chair that was near the front door. He said every time someone went out or in, they picked up the baby, you know, held the baby and gurgled, etc. He said that baby got more attention than anyone. So he was highly impressed. At the end of this three-day period that he had been with the family, he went over to the mom and he said to her, look, I see that this is a really happy, vibrant home and your family members are happy, but I have a question for you. With all the overpopulation in the world, do you think that the world truly can sustain this many children? How many grandchildren do you think you're going to have? So obviously his question was coming from a particular perspective. She didn't speak to him about the fact that the world can sustain many more people if we would move uh, away from eating as much meat as we do to eating more vegetables, if we would you know, have more fair trade and different methods of farming, etc., that we really could sustain many, uh, many more people. She didn't address that at all. She said to him as follows. And you know, she didn't, she didn't address either the notion that there have been so many millions that have been slaughtered and uh, you know, every, every person that is brought into the fold of our people is a gift. She didn't say that. She said to him, I educate my children. There is this notion of Bashinantam, you must educate your kids in a way where I am teaching them God's Torah and teaching them what it means to be an observant Jew. And as such, I know that they will always contribute more to the world than what they take from the world. I love that notion. We're all consuming and producing. Am I giving back more than I'm taking? Doesn't matter what you do, of course we're taking, we're breathing in oxygen, we're drinking water and eating food. That's at the most basic level, let alone electricity and gasoline, etc. I am consuming and taking in from the world, even energetically from other people. Am I giving out more than what I gain? This was a guiding light in her education in her home. She was clearly focused on this notion that there's no divisions, space or time, constantly educating the kids, being present, giving them a message. You're here to make a difference. You're here to make a contribution. And this process we are taught begins really early. And I'm not talking one year old, six months old. We're talking even in utero. We're taught that one of the most powerful things that we can do is be stringent in the food that we eat, that it should be particularly kosher during pregnancy, that we should guard ourselves from seeing negative things during that period. Because everything we see or hear, eat, ingest, is going to have an impact on that fetus, and the fetus has a consciousness. So the education of the child begins from the get-go. And the Rebbe had a campaign where he asked a woman to hang a certain psalm, Shiram Alois, in the bassinet once the baby was born. Right away, that child should be surrounded by the holy letters of the Torah. That means when you go to sleep, when you wake up, in your home on the street, you could, you could have given birth at home, given birth in a hospital. Right away, the education begins, and so it goes, not missing a day. It's one of the toughest jobs in the world, is to really parent our children. And also, I guess, to be present to ourselves. But our kids are going to give us a run for our money in very different arenas. And I'm not saying that it isn't full of joy. I could honestly say the most gratifying aspect of my life is raising my children, but it doesn't come without its challenges. So I want to in conclude with a word of uh, real encouragement and, and light. I have a friend who is a deeply spiritual person and I want to share a story of hers on a really upbeat, beautiful note about education. 
She was struggling with her teenage daughter, regular teenage struggles. Uh, her daughter was feeling depressed or isolated, left out from the crowd, etc. And she said, you know what, I'm going to go to the Rebbe's or hell and pray there. So off she went and she's, she spent a long time in prayer. And when she finished, she thought, I'll go inside the house. Uh, there's a big tent and a house where there's a video of the Rebbe speaking, singing, interacting with others on an ongoing basis and see what's playing on the video now and is there any teaching that I can glean from it for my personal situation. So she went into the house and uh, a new video began just as she, just as she walked in. It was the time of Tu Bishvat, which is the Jewish New Year for trees. And the Rebbe was speaking about the different species and he said, people are like the different species. You have different kinds of people who are like these different species. And sometimes you will find that you're having difficulty educating your child we know, we are taught, educate a child according to his or her way. Use the modality, the gifts of that child, the unique personality of that child as the yardstick, the basis for which you're going to be educating them. And people have very different temperaments, the Rebbe said, and sometimes you might look at one of your children and feel worried, despondent. Where are they going? What's going to happen? He answered as follows, the highest of all of the seven species of Tubishvat, we, we have uh, wheat and barley and uh, grapes, figs, pomegranates, etc. The last one is the date tree. And it takes 70 years for a date tree to grow and begin to give forth its fruit. In education, we might have to wait a very long time in order to see what is the outcome of my input. Sometimes we're, we feel I'm investing and investing and what's coming out of it? What am I getting from this? Why is my child not going in the right direction? And as we've been saying, applying that to ourselves, I could be working on myself, introspecting, trying to grow and don't seem to get anywhere. We need to give ourselves the message to take it in deeply. Education is a lifelong process. It has no boundaries. And it is highly possible that I've planted a tree that's going to grow, I planted a seed that is going to grow into a date tree, give the sweetest of all fruits, but it's going to take a lot of time. Our sages tell us that when Mashiach comes, the Redeemer comes, we'll each sit under our own day tree. This tree represents a state of blessing and higher consciousness associated with the redemption. And it is this tree that takes 70 years. We have to know it could be a lengthy process, but in the end, I will be able to enjoy the sweetness of the dates if I just dedicate myself to this process of educating the child.